Greetings all, my name is JD from Studio 2105. Welcome back to Mixstream Online and another brand new episode of Weekly Update Wednesdays. First off, my apologies, this week's video is a day late. It's been incredibly busy right here at the studio. Well, you know, we've been under lockdown for the past couple of months and since the sector reopened a few weeks ago, things have been incredibly hectic, right? It's bordering on being a little bit chaotic like now. Projects that were on hold um, for a long, long time, you know, have started to resume. Besides that, you have, you know, uh, getting a lot of studio um, bookings as well for recording sessions. So this is an incredibly busy period. But, you know, I hope that all of uh, my friends and all of you out there who are in TV, in film, in production in you know not only music and audio hope all of you are also staying busy with work but in the meantime remember to also stay safe and happy and healthy as well if you're new to this channel i want to warmly welcome you here i want to give a big shout out and a thank you to the patrons who help to support the channel financially uh, if you are not a subscriber yet please do head on down and click on the subscribe button don't forget, click on the notification bell as well so that you'll be updated every time I put out a brand new video. We sign up for the email list for a bunch of free stuff. And uh, if you want to become a patron, find out more info by heading down to the website below www.patreon.com slash studio2105. If you're just getting into the studio and recording business, this week's featured question is definitely one that's on a lot of your minds out there. Without further ado, let's get down into it. What should I get for my studio? A mixer or an audio interface? Ah, the age-old question, right? How to get the audio in and out of your computer? With the incredibly wide variety of devices that's available out there, right? You know, from a simple USB microphone all the way to a big, you know, Maddie and a Dante audio interface. It can be confusing, especially, right, if you are just getting into the studio and recording business. The mixer or an audio interface is going to be the central piece of gear in your studio. So it helps to know right, the, and understand the differences in order to find the one that best suits your needs. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to be comparing standalone audio interfaces like the Focusrite, Scarlett, Claret Range, Audient ID, all the way to the big boys, right, such as the Avid, Apogee, and Universal Audio uh, models. And on the other hand, mixers with built-in audio interfaces, such as the Presona Studio Live, compact mixers from Yamaha, Behringer, Mackey, also, right, um, have uh, audio interface uh, uh, functionality as well. And, you know, live broadcast style mixers, such as, right, the Zoom Live Track series. Many digital live sound mixers from manufacturers such as Behringer, Midas, Allen and Heath, Soundcraft, etc., um, also feature audio interface capabilities. These are usually used to record live shows, like, um, live concerts, broadcast events, and these typically have pretty high channel counts, high inputs. Right? Um, I'm not surprised if it's at least minimum 24 but sometimes even 32 or more. Lah. But for the purposes of this video, I won't be covering these types of mixers. While both allow you to connect, you know, multiple sound sources such as microphones, DI boxes, you know, instruments, line level devices, right? There are several key differences between them. Firstly, an audio interface usually only offers inputs and outputs, the level controls for your know, input gain, your output volume, and not much else, right, in terms of hardware. On the other hand, a mixer can function as a standalone device without the need of a computer and has got the physical knobs, faders, the aux sends, the returns, all laid out in the familiar channel strip and master section fashion that we all know. Here are a few questions I would ask. Number one, what are you mainly going to be recording? Are you going to be mainly recording bands? solo musicians, singers, podcasts, 
or doing live streams with both audio and video. Number two, how many inputs do you need, right? How many mics, how many instruments do you need to plug in? Number three, what are your monitoring outputs that you need for headphones? And number four, do you prefer to manage signal processing and uh, routing using software or would you prefer having a dedicated hardware control for the task? Now, even though it lacks the physical form of a mixer, practically every audio interface has some form of software mixer, all right? Software mixing control that has got the similar functionality, right? It allows you to control your inputs, your outputs, you set up headphone mixes for the artists and other tasks as well. Some audio interfaces also have built-in processing that allows you to add EQ, compression, and effects. One that really stands out that comes to mind would be the Universal Audio Apollo series. It also has the onboard DSP that allows you to run right its uh, claimed UAD plugins and also the ability to print the sound of those plugins onto the recorded tracks. The most obvious benefit to working with a hardware mixer is the immediate hands-on control of the processing parameters, right? You no need to open up menus, windows, scroll or click to load plugins, right? Or to adjust, right? EQ compressor settings and all that. Now, this is especially important, right? In a broadcast or a live show scenario because you may need to adjust these settings quickly, right? literally on the fly. And one thing to look out for though, is that not all mixers with audio interfaces have full multi-channel audio um, recording capabilities. What do I mean by this, right? You know, it may have a high number of inputs, right? You could have 16 inputs and all, but in the end, it only sends a stereo mix to the computer, right? Not the individual channels. This can be very convenient, right? For podcasts or live streaming, but if you want to record a band, right, you want to record a bunch of musicians, you need to check the specs and the product description to make sure that that particular mixer has got the capability. Now, finally, there are several other um, features that you may want to pay attention to, and these are number one, phantom power. Although it is a common feature on right, almost all devices, now some may only have phantom power on one or only a few inputs so you need to plan ahead what mics are you going to be using right make sure that you have fandom power available for any of those that may need it number two mono or stereo channels when uh, the manufacturers describe the channel count they include both the mono and stereo channels like for example you know, a mixer that's advertised as a 12 channel may have only eight mono and two stereo channels. So you need to take this into consideration what you can and what you need to hook up, right? Carefully examine, once again, study, do a little bit of research, check the product description, check the specs, right? And see what available connections do they have. Number three, types of inputs. Professional XLR and or combi jack inputs are commonly found on most devices nowadays, but the quarter inch the line level inputs right, can either be balanced TRS, unbalanced TS, or unbalanced RCA jacks. So check out this video to learn more about TS and TRS connections. Now, the same will also go for the outputs, right? right either to other devices or to your monitor speakers. Number four, power supply. If portability is a requirement, you will want to get a device that can be USB bus powered. Some smaller devices such as those designed for location recording may even be battery powered. And obviously many of them will come with power supplies, either external or internal that you can use when the situation uh, avails itself. Number five, loop back audio. Now this feature, if present, is incredibly convenient for streamers as it allows them to route the computer's output back into the device you combine it with other sources such as mics and uh, instruments and then you reroute it back into your streaming software. Lastly, be aware that a mixer with a built-in audio interface generally has got no software control functions uh, with the exception of a few uh, such as like the PreSonus uh, Studio Live. Now, this means that you won't be able to control your DAW with the physical faders, okay? 
Now to do so, you will need a control service, right? Uh, which is outside of what we're talking about in this video. You can perhaps discuss it in another time. Now to sum things all up, right? There are differences and similarities between mixers and audio interfaces. And the best solution will depend on your individual workflow and requirements. So think about all the questions and all the different considerations that you need to take into account and make the best and most informed decision on what to get. So what do you use in your studio setup, right? Do you use a mixer with a built-in audio interface? Do you use an audio interface alone, a standalone uh, audio interface? Or maybe a combination of both, right? You have a mixer and you also have audio interfaces. Let me know down in the comments below, okay? So that's all for this video. I hope you found this useful and informative. If you did, please do leave a like to share this with your friends. And uh, if you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to hear them from you. Please leave them down in the comments below. If you're not a subscriber, please head on down, click on the subscribe button. And if you want to help support the channel financially, do head on down to the Patreon page for more info on how you can become a patron. Till next time, I hope to see you again in another video real soon. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Happy recording and mixing. Peace, love, and music.